Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I listened to a video of a woman my age, literally one year younger than I. I'm 65, so you know what that makes her. Let's see if you can do the math. Anyway, so here I am listening to her brag about her lifestyle, as she was happy with it. I would not have been happy with that, but she was. So thank God for her gratefulness. But she lived in a trailer park. She made literally $76 less than I do. That's it, just $76. That was the only difference in our income. She made $800 a month Social Security. I make $876. Plus, God challenged me to trust him for my food supply, so I no longer receive food stamps either. Yeah. <laughs> now, this woman sits there, lives in her car for $800 a month. She lives in her car. She pays whatever she pays for her space, and she buys her food, and she gets it all stored up. She has a little ice bucket for her. I mean, it, it's, yeah, you can imagine what her life is like. She insulates her windows to her car with a bunch of the silver insulation, and she cut out two chairs, two passenger chairs, front and back, so she can stretch a bed in there. Short bed, but a bed. Huh. Anyway, so you can imagine how tight it can get. And then next to her car, she has a tent. Now, let me share this with you. Many of you get so upset with God when you go through trials. And I know you've heard my story, so I'm not going to drag it out. But I'm going to share with you how God can create a beautiful package out of junk. I was in a funk because I felt like my life has been dumped in the junk. And this is why. I lived in a house on foreclosure for two and a half years. In other words, for that two and a half years, God sustained our ability to stay in that house without paying one dime on the mortgage because there was nothing left to pay on the mortgage. During that time, God led me to scripture a number of times that said, the Lord will choose your inheritance for you, which led me to believe that was not it. Even though it was put in my name through probate, it was not it. But it didn't stop me from having hissy fits and crying the blues and crying my eyes out. What ended up happening was because I kept going to God and telling him I trusted him, even though I didn't know what he was doing and I didn't necessarily like it. The bottom line was I prayed a prayer. He sent a friend to quote my prayer back to me who knew nothing about my prayer which led me to believe God was saying, I heard you, now watch me work. And just about the time when it seemed like there was nothing left to do but move into my hair salon and ask the owner to let me move my husband in with me. And I'm telling you, that was a heartbreaker for me. That was a very, that is to me the darkest period of my life. But I made it through because of God. Here, he turns around and moves us 70-something miles away to a place I knew nothing about except one street. <laughs> I knew nothing else. God leads us here, has us buy a house in my husband's name only because he had the good credit, after which he quick claims it to me so that I don't have to go through the court's process to get the house in my name. He made sure it was in my name before he passed away. That's a lot of faith because I could have been one of those wives that threw him to a convalescent home and said, see, see, I wouldn't want to be you. I'll get that later. 
So my point in saying that is God blessed both me and my husband through each other. I took care of him and he made sure I was taken care of after he went, after he went to be with the Lord, that is. Now, check this out. Some of you think that you can't live on a low income, but you can. You have to change your priorities. You have to change your methods. Change is good. It is. The Bible says, I learn to abound and I learn to abase. And both in both conditions, I'm confident. I'm satisfied. There was a time my husband and I went out and ate three or four times a, a week. We just were always going out on dates together. We just loved each other's company. And we would get through, he'd get through with his dialysis, i get through with my styling hair, and we'd both be wasted and tired, but we wanted to go out and enjoy each other. And that's what we did. So my point in saying that is, when the foreclosure began, going out was no more an option. We stopped it dead in its tracks. And as time went on, we started clamping down on everything. Because of the real estate crash, God brought a house that was way beyond our reach financially within reach. And then we offered lower than what they were asking. And we got this 1,408 two-story home in a senior gated community with Spanish tile roofs. Mint condition, four, 68.9. That's it. Now the house can sell for 200,000. But it's mine, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now listen, if I had been like that lady, I would have been just like her, but I would have, see that wouldn't have worked for me. I would have been renting somebody's garage out or somebody's little hole in the wall. I would have been, renting something where I could just have a roof over my head. Who knows where I would have to take showers and all that. I would just settle for whatever I could get. But God said no. He didn't use the trial in that dark period to leave us in the dark. He did not abandon us. Listen to what I'm saying. A lot of you guys think God is abandoning you when things just go over your head and you feel like, there's nothing you could do. Listen to me. If God allows you to get sunken down in the water, he's going to make a way for you to breathe. I'm telling you he'll do that. Okay, let me not get too emotional. So what ended up happening is after we moved out here, I mean, while in order to move out here, we needed moving expenses. We didn't have it. The real estate broker told us, short sale your house. Now, you know, short sales take a long time. Our house short sale within the same period that escrow closed for this house. And we ended up having money in hand to move because when you short sale a house, they'll give you $3,000 allowance for moving. So we were able to move. Check that out. We were able to hire a moving company and move. Okay. Now, <laughs> and had a little left over to turn on the utilities with. God worked miracle after miracle from a very dark place. Some of your biggest miracles are in the dark. Some of your biggest breakthroughs will come from the abyss. Okay, some of your biggest pleasures will be birthed in the middle of your greatest pain. So I want to share with you now, God promised me one day when I was sitting in a doctor's office, getting my blood pressure checked, God spoke to me while the doctor was leaning over to listen to my heart. He said, I'm taking care of you now. My husband had passed away. My blood pressure shot up. 
And God let me know at that point, now we're going to work on your health. I didn't know to what extent. Till a year and a half later when I ended up in ICU, after the doctor's visit, I ended up in ICU with congestive heart failure and double lung pneumonia. <laughs> God used that period to take care of me and get my body and get me in line so I would understand the workings of my own body and know my limits. Now, when my husband passed away, and this is what a lot of people just won't do. When my husband passed away, my income dropped because then I'm, I'm living. See, I'd stopped working. I had stopped doing hair. I had to give up my clientele because I had to work from, I had to take care of my husband 24 seven. He needed 24 hour care. He was dying and I wasn't going to put him in a convalescent home. He and I are going to ride this thing out together. And that's what we did. But I had to let go of the business and take care of him. So listen to this. So what happened was after he passed, now I'm making $856 a month. I own a house that he quit claim to me. Do you know God worked this baby out so well that I'm able to pay my house payment, my HOA, the house insurance is included. The property taxes are included. My utilities, man, I'm making it. And I'm not sleeping in a garage. I'm not renting a hole in the wall. And I'm not living in a trailer park. I'm not putting any of that down. My point is, I'm living way bigger than I am financially. If you look for all it, when you look at it from a practical sense, there is no way somebody living in, with my money should live in a place like this. Okay. What I want to share with you, now I'm going to have pictures as this video is playing. So you can see just what God blessed us with. The whole grounds. What I want to share with you is don't curse your darkness. Do not curse your darkness. Bless the Lord. When the Bible says, bless the Lord, oh my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Just keep blessing the Lord, oh my soul. You let your soul bless the Lord. When you want to curse your darkness, no. Bless the Lord. When you want to pull your hair out, go to God with your tears. Ask him to minister to you. But do not blame him. You have no idea what surprises are waiting for you around the corner. If you keep the right attitude. Yes, you'll get mad. Yes, you'll get frustrated. You're human. But don't misplace the blame. Don't forget to give God the glory. Don't stop expecting the best from God when you're experiencing the worst. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm going to make this quick. So, I cut out the meat. I cut out TV. I cut out my regular phone service and my cell phone service. Cut out everything, got a government phone, got UMA, O-O-M-A. No, I don't get a kickback from them. But my phone bill is only $4 and something a month. And then I just have cable and that's it. So I want to tell you, God is able. Don't you forget that. No matter how dark it is, God is able. I hope that encouraged you.